Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Create Your Life series, where we help you maximize your potential and results in the area of personal development, entrepreneurship, and travel. And I'm your host, Kevin Y. Brown. Create your life. Create ta propre vie. Create your life. Create your life. Create your life. Create your life. Don't skip your liver. You better create your life. <laughs> create your life. Create la vie. Create your life. Create your life. Beautiful people, this is the Create Your Life series. I'm your host, Kevin Y. Brown. So happy to be here with you uh, on this Sunday. Took a little hiatus, but we are back. We are back. Uh, before we bring on this guest, definitely want to uh, catch up with you, let you know what's been going on uh, over the last couple weeks. Um, as you know, we did the Ambition event June 21st, which went amazing. Uh, and then we came in the studio and then took a, a hiatus. And so uh, how's everybody's summer going, really? You know, we... Uh, I've had the opportunity uh, to go to Barcelona, Ibiza, and also to Paris. So spent some time out there, you know, definitely uh, took some leisure time, uh, time to take in the scenes and, you know, hung out a little bit, did a little bit of partying. Uh, It was a well-deserved break um, with the opportunity to rest, to recharge, and also to uh, revamp, you know, CYLS, you know, Create Your Life series. And, you know, we're always constantly improving and trying to figure out ways to better ourselves and create our best life. So plugging out is uh, both fun and necessary, you know, especially when you've worked so hard to earn it. And I think that's one thing that's really, really important is to make sure that we're always earning these breaks versus just taking them. And so, uh, you know, drop us a line on our IG and, and tell us how you have been plugging out and rewarding yourself for your hard work this summer, you know, and what summer fun you're actually getting into. We'd like to know, you know, we definitely like to highlight you on our platform to uh, as, you know, that person who's out there creating their life and, and moving and grooving and shaking. Um, while abroad, really had the opportunity to meet some really great people, especially from Australia. I swear those Aussies are always everywhere. Um, but you know, people from, from all over Spain, from, from Paris, uh, from Africa, Scotland, I mean, everywhere, just having just amazing conversation, even some people from, uh, from the Netherlands, you know, had a friend that I met from the Rotterdam really had some really insightful conversations. So very happy and I'm blessed to have that. But another thing that I want to let you all know is that, uh, create your life series. We're growing and we're getting a greater buzz and, you know, and following, and we are expanding the team. So if you're interested in podcasting, broadcast, social media, and want to be a uh, part of the team, or maybe even an intern, you know, let us know, you know, we're taking things to the next level and expanding our team with new and eager talent. So contact us at info at CYLseries.com. So just want to put that out there, let you know that that's happening. And that's, what's been happening with us over the last couple of weeks. So, Without further ado, I actually want to bring in our guest. We have this guy. He just came up uh, to New York City for the weekend for a couple of days, and it is uh, none other than Mr. Carl Ulysses. Carl, please say hello to the Create Your Life family. Hello, beautiful people. Um, Thank you so much for having me today. Uh, It is great to be here, and uh, I'm just blessed to be in your presence. Man. Always, always, man. Carl, you have been doing some really amazing and epic things, man. Uh, Thank you. As a TV and film industry tailor and custom clothier, you know, I definitely need to get my Carl Ulysses. You know how I feel about waistcoats. <laughs> and I'm actually loving the one that you're wearing right now, man. So I need a custom uh, custom suit and well, a custom take waistcoat. Care of you. Yeah, thank you. But you've had the opportunity to work on some pretty epic projects lately, man. Uh, I have. Tell I us, have. Tell us about a couple of them. <laughs> I've definitely been been blessed to work on the set as the head tailor for All Eyes on Me, uh, the Tupac biopic that came out on the on the 16th. Um, I'm also working. I was also the head tailor on the Detroit movie mm-hmm. that comes out in on August 4th, and then I was also tailor on Black Panther, which I really can't wait for. It comes out February of next year of 2018. Dude, that Black Panther movie, I'm. I'm going to go see that movie multiple times. Like, I'm so excited about that movie. I'll be right there with you because I have to see it multiple times as well. Take okay. everything in. Now, as the tailor on these movies, do you get to see them before they come out? Or how does that how does that work? Uh, we do get to go to premieres. Usually Marvel does a premiere just for the cast and crew okay. uh, down in Atlanta. 
Uh, that's where we filmed the movie at. So we usually get to see it probably about two or three weeks before it actually comes out. Oh, man, that is awesome. In those two to three weeks, do do any changes take place on the movies? Uh, no changes. It's, it's all edited and um, mixed actually before then. Mm-hmm. So it'll probably be done and ready and finalized before the year is even over. Okay. And you've, you've actually, this is, is Black Panther your second Marvel movie? Because I know you worked on Captain America before as well. Um. It is. It is. Okay. Yes. I worked on Captain America and then Black Panther. Yeah. Okay. So what has been your favorite project? Because you worked on a few different movies and also some group TV shows yeah. as well, right? I did. Yes. What were some of the TV shows that you had? Uh, I work worked on? on The Game. I worked on Zoe Ever After. I worked on Satisfaction, which was on USA. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked on Drop Dead Diva, mm-hmm. which uh, ended in 2015. 20, yeah, 15, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've worked on about 23 TVs, TV shows and films mm-hmm. to date. Mm. Wow. What does it take? Because it seems like, you know, being a tailor, your skill set is important. But how important is networking in order to get on to the next project? Because I've, you know, from what I see from you, you're always working on a new project or a new movie and film. What does it take in order to keep that uh, consistent workflow going? Um, it's a lot about... Uh, just being a, a great person and um, having a good work ethic. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not only about your skill set, mm-hmm. which is very important, but, you know, everybody wants to be, we're going to be around the same people for about 16 hours a day, up to 16 hours a day. So they want to know that they can count on you, that you're loyal, mm-hmm. and, and just that you're a great person. So networking is very, very important mm-hmm. because it's almost like you're on an interview every single day. Wow. So if you slip up and do something you know, wrong or, or mess up big time, they can just get somebody else in. But you always want to be on top of your game so that they can come back and hire you for the next movie and the next movie and also refer you so that you can get on films as well. You were talking about a story or uh, telling me about a time where someone in- basically endorsed you and that's how you got on the Black Panther movie. Can you enlighten yeah. us about that story? So actually, um, this lady, that she was actually one of the first African-American costume designers uh, she was my costume designer on All Eyes On Me. Um, I actually found out that she was going to be the costume designer and immediately called her and said, you know, I really want to be on this film. And we've worked together numerous times before that. Mm-hmm. She took me on as the head tailor for All Eyes On Me, and then I expressed to her, um, I asked her what she was doing next. She mm-hmm. said she was doing a movie in... Um, in Boston, Mm -hmm. and it was going to be directed by Catherine Bigelow, who did Hurt Locker and Zero Dark Thirty. And it was about the the Detroit riots in 1972. Mm -hmm. So I told her I really wanted to be on it. If she could allow me to travel out there, if they would allow me, then that would be great. So I worked out there with her. I was the head tailor on that film. And then one day, we saw something about Black Panther, and I said, man, I wish I could work on that movie. She said, just a second, Carl. She picked up the phone and called the woman who was going to be the costume designer for Black Panther and said, Carl is great. You know, he's very loyal. He can make anything. He needs to be on this movie. And then from there on, she just, uh, Ruth Carter is the costume direct, uh, designer for uh, Black Panther. Ruth is amazing. And then also the the woman that I referred to earlier, her name is Francine Tanchuk. And um, and both of them were the first, some of the first, well, actually the first two uh, black costume designers, both from L.A. Mm. And how's the experience been working on Black Panther? How has that been for you, man? Uh, at first, it, it was crazy because it was some things I had, do, I was asked to do some things that I had never done before. Mm-hmm. So I was asked to make costumes, extensive costumes, where you have to actually think about how everything will be put on. So if you're making a, let's say you're making a a one-piece bodysuit Mm -hmm. with a belt that has shoulder pieces, you have to be able to put everything together so that they can just slip it on all at once. Wow. So it was really, really hard. Um, You know, it was... when I say it was hard, it was hard because she would ask me to make a piece. I would make it. Mm-hmm. I would think that it was amazing. 
I take it to her and show it to her, and she say, no, um, it needs some work. So I'd have to go back to the drawing board. You know, I bring it back to her and say, okay, I'm done. This looks amazing. And she say, uh, I don't think so. I think it needs something else. So she was really just challenging me to become better and to dig deeper. So I think Black Panther definitely, by far, is one of the best films that I've worked on, only because it has made me to become a better tailor and designer. So when you meet those challenges of having to go back to the drawing board, what are some of the skills or some of the things that you do in order to stay sharp or to keep sharpening, right? So she told you that it needed some work. Did she specify to you how it needed to be worked, or did you have to go in and figure that out yourself? Well, she gave us free reign to actually interpret what we saw mm-hmm. on, the, um, on the pictures, on the illustrations. Mm-hmm. But she also would give us her direction, what she thought would look good. So she would say, um, you know, this belt needs to be made this way. But as for the details, I'm leaving that up to you. Mm -hmm. So we would just have to basically interpret it ourselves. And we couldn't make it just like the picture looked because it needed to be, it needed to feel authentic, you know. And when I say authentic, it needed to feel African, like it was from Africa. Right. Like it was passed down from generations to generations. So we had to do a lot. I would I would actually go back and research. I would look at pictures. I would look at film. I would look at videos. And anything we, that so, I could to draw inspiration. Okay. And so when you're saying you're looking at film, you're looking at videos, you're going like on YouTube and yeah. looking at, uh, what are you looking at on YouTube? YouTube, um, looking at documentaries, just looking at how um, garments fall uh, when they're dancing, just when they're, when they're fighting, anything. Mm. because we did have to make a, make a lot of warrior outfits as well. So we had to look at a, a lot of different um, aspects of African culture. Mm-hmm. And you, you worked on a number of films. When you're not working on films, you're creating and, and doing custom suits. Right, I am, yes. Um, who are some of the people that you've had the opportunity to design for and create our custom garments for? Um, of course, I, I have to mention Janelle Monet because that was the first young lady or first client that I really worked with, uh, Finesworth Bentley or Derek Watkins. Um, I did some things for him. I, when I was up in New York, Jessica Bill, Jane Rosenthal, who is the um, founder of Tribeca Film Festival. Mm-hmm. Um, and then back down in Atlanta, I, I worked with a lot of entertainers um, and just tailored for um, um, a, lot of, a lot of different people. I just was uh, given the opportunity to tailor for Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, two weeks ago. Yeah. So um, it's definitely been a blessing. I've been riding this wave and enjoying it. And, you know, speaking of riding a wave and enjoying it, man, you came up you from Atlanta, came up to New York for yes. how many years were you in New York? Four years. For four years. How did, the new, how did New York help you with your grind? Because you returned back to Atlanta. You've been down there for the last three years. How did New York shape uh, your work ethic and the way that you take on your industry? Uh, since being here and now back in Atlanta? Um, New York showed me that there's nothing that I can go through that can hinder me from my dream. And when and I say that because New York provided me struggle like no none other. Um, and it really shaped me in uh, always making sure that I move forward no matter what is around me. Um, always paying attention to my vision and to my dream, no matter what adversity is in front of me mm-hmm. or what chaos is around me. So my four years here helped take me through um, and, and know that nothing can stop me. Okay. Wow, nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Your line is called what? Because you have a custom my, line as well. Yes. So my line is called Carl Ulysses. Okay. And um, I actually just opened a showroom in Atlanta on East Andrews in Buckhead. Um, it's an upscale showroom where I do alterations. Um, I do custom suiting, custom shirting, uh, also men's accessories. I have a bow tie line. I'll be dropping my watch line soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, driving glove line bag line all under Carl Ulysses right all under Carl Ulysses and then I also do um sewing classes and I like to give back in that way on Saturday mornings mm. seems like you come a long way from taking those uh from a, creating a muslin suit 
Oh, uh, man. <laughs> that was, at Clark Atlanta while being yeah. a bio major. Yeah, that was crazy. That was back in 2004, mm-hmm. 2004, second semester of my junior year. And um, it was the, I've never worked that hard in my life. What would you say are some of the, the key things that you've learned? Give us two key things that you've learned on this, this journey, because it seems like you've been at this for 12, 13 years now. What have been some of the most important lessons that you've learned? Um, one thing that I've really learned and, and I've stayed um, true to is um, not shunning the struggle because it's God's gift. Uh, just accepting what I'm handed and trying to make the best of it. And then also um, doing my work well and allowing it to speak for me. Um, day in, day out, take it one day at a time and always continue to do your best no matter what. What would you say to somebody who is interested in pursuing a career in fashion uh, but doesn't necessarily know what they're getting into? Um, I think not knowing or the... Well, not knowing what you're getting into, I think that is the best thing that anyone can possibly be up against um, because it provides challenge, and challenge is what shapes you. Um, And what I would would say to them is it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to learn. It's okay not to be be the best because there is no one that is going to be as good as you are at whatever it is that you're trying to do. So nobody can be you. Right. Only you. That uniqueness. Right. And I think when you don't learn, when you don't know something, also it gives you the opportunity to walk into something blindly. And exactly. just learn, 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 learn. So you just get this game. You don't have a jaded uh, point of view. Right. Perspective. What have been, what has been like the best pieces of, of advice that you've gotten since you've been doing what you're doing in the uh, industry? Because I believe Kevin Mays, had right. a big part in you getting yeah, your, your opportunities in the film industry. So what have been some of the jewels, you know, top jewels that you've gotten from other people? Um, and Kevin Mays, Kevin Mays gives me a lot of jewels. Um, in 2013, he gave me the opportunity to work down in the film industry in Atlanta. And he told me, um, he said, you're never going to get this opportunity again. So either you're going to take it and excel or either you're going to be complacent and stay where you're at. And in less than 10 minutes, I decided to move to Atlanta, you know, no matter what. So um, I think that, you know, the the best jewels that I have received mm-hmm. don't come from a person. They come from situations. Okay. Um, and like I said, all four years while I was up here in New York, I was struggling. Right. You know. Um, what did that struggle look like? Because I feel like sometimes people don't understand the details of the sacrifice. Uh, I moved to New York. I didn't know where I was li- going to live. <laughs> um, but I moved right. because I knew it was the best thing for me. Mm-hmm. Three months after that, I, res- I got my own place. Um, and I had to sacrifice my money. So I I ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for three times a day for nine months. I also slept on an air mattress that had a hole in it um, that was taped up. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I used to think to myself and say, am I going to ride this bus or am I going to buy something to eat? You know? And throughout that struggle, you'll you'll receive what you need throughout struggle as long as you embrace it. And I was given family, Mm. you know. Um, And sometimes you get what you need no matter if you deserve it or not, you know. And and that's what kept me going, you know. Um, Iron sharpens iron. And if you're not sharpening, then you're resting. Exactly. And you, I think one of the things about you is you have a very close bond with your family members. Like you I have do. two younger brothers. You're the oldest of three and very close relationship with your mother. Uh, how did they help you through this time of sacrifice and really, 
you know, learning those lessons and moving forward in those lessons that you're learning during the sacrifice. Constant support, no matter if they believe what I said was going to happen or not. Mm -hmm. They chose to support me no matter what. What was the what was your course of action in the event that someone close to you way have it be those three people or the family that you made here in New York City? What was your course of action when people were not believers in what it is that you said you were going to do? Um, you cut them off. You mm-hmm. know, you they can still be your friends, but you don't you cut them off. And I, I don't mean just cut them off totally, but you cut them off from knowing about what your vision is. Mm hmm. From here on out, you know who to speak to and who not to speak to. You keep your vision and your dreams. It's, it's like a newborn baby. You don't. You're not going to take a newborn baby out and let everybody hug and kiss it because it might get sick or something might happen. Mm-hmm. You you hold your dream the same way. You protect it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Initially, you were going to be a professional baseball player. Then you were a bio major in college, turned psychology major, now a fashionista, for lack of a better term. How does that happen? Uh, exactly. <laughs> how, how does that happen, man? And who would you who would you give credit to for this evolution and kind of like guiding you through? Kevin is actually the young Absolutely man who not. talked me into moving to New York. But... um. I definitely have to give credit to him for for allowing me to do that. And, I mean, I slept on his couch for the first three months while I was here. You know, I didn't know where I was going to stay. He sacrificed. He made a big, a huge sacrifice in order for me to to move up in the ranks. Uh, So it would have to be Kevin. It would have to be another man named Kevin who is a tailor, a master tailor in the film industry. He was the head tailor of Black Panther, and he also got me to move down to Atlanta, stuck his neck on a limb and just said, you know, this guy, you need to take this guy on this movie. And they they trusted him and allowed me to go down there. So, yeah, and then my parents, for their constant support, right. brothers, um, yeah. How important has trusting your gut been? Because you, like we just talked about four different possible careers right there. How important has trusting your gut been in this, uh, in this journey and evolution of yourself? Because you still have a lot more to do. And, you know, you've talked about dreams that you want to accomplish in life. And you have so much more to offer. So how important is it to trust your gut? Oh, that's very important. Um, staying true to yourself is probably the one of the best things that you can do in life, especially as a, an entrepreneur, um, just just staying true to who you are and, and really being in tune with who you are, knowing what works for you and what doesn't, and not trying to cut corners on it, not trying to beat around the bush about it, but really staying true to yourself is, is the best thing that you could ever do. Some people want to be who you are and they some obtain it some people don't what are some of the things that you see that limit others when they're trying to aspire to be a Carl Ulysses uh, in terms of being a TV film uh, industry tailor or have a a custom clothing or what are some of the things that you see that help people or make people crash and burn Um, I think some of the things that make people crash and burn are um like I said, not staying true to themselves, trying to be someone that they aren't, Mm -hmm. Um, trying to outreach their goals, not being patient, um, or being complacent and not taking risks. So like you said, it's all about, you know, um, knowing who you are and and staying true to that at all times. Mm. What are three things you would tell somebody uh, who's looking to create their best life? Hmm, that's a good question. One thing, the first thing I would say is prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, it took a lot of prayer for me to get to where I am. Um, and as I've drawn nearer to God, he has drawn nearer to me and the doors have just opened. Um, so that would be, have to be the first thing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, 
embracing challenge, standing in the face of adversity, um, not allowing chaos, the chaos around you to hinder you from what you said you want to set, set out to do or who you want to set up to be. Um, and then just taking full advantage of each and every opportunity that you have, reaching out to every resource that you have and um, kind of making it plain, writing down your vision and carrying it out. Okay. How do our listeners, the Create Your Life Series family, how do they stay in contact with you? What are your social media handles, email addresses? Someone wants to get a custom suit made from Carl Ulysses. Like, how do they go about doing so? I can be emailed at info at carlulysses.com. That's C-A-R-L-U-L-Y-S-S-E-S. -S -S. Uh, you can find me on IG or Facebook at Carl, C-A-R-L, Ulysses, U-L-Y-S-S-E-S. And last but definitely not least, what is on the horizon for Carl Ulysses? Um, oh, man. I'm just open to so many new opportunities. Um, I actually just came from yeah. a um, design forum, New York, which was a clothiers convention up in New York. I didn't even know about it. Mm -hmm. But um, some of the vendors that I work with, some of the fabric manufacturers and fabric, fabric mills, they told me about it. And that's one big reason why I was up here. So... My eyes have been open immensely to um, just different things that I can add to my repertoire and to my portfolio. So um, there's endless possibilities. And um, I'll be designing some new clothing coming out in the spring. Like I said, men's accessories coming out soon. Um, so you just have to keep watching. Okay. Well. Beautiful people, you heard it first here from Carl Ulysses. You'll definitely have to keep watching in order to find out uh, what he has coming up. And, you know, definitely I want one of his watches. So <laughs> you'll definitely see me with that. I'm usually always in the all-black watch, you know. So I'm looking to get an all-black Carl Ulysses watch. Well, I've make been sure asking one you to you for years now. I, I've been <laughs> wanting one, man, so I really need one. Um, and, man, just thank you so much uh, for taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know you're up here from Atlanta to come in and be on the Create Your Life series, man, and talk about your journey and your recent successes. Man, it's a blessing. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, I'm Diane. I have a daughter, Nikki, and she's a senior at high school. She just got accepted for early decision into college. Prior to taking Kevin's program, we were pretty overwhelmed because her college debt after her merit scholarships looks like it's going to be about $150,000 in four years. Feeling pretty overwhelmed about that $150,000 potential debt, I decided to enroll in Kevin's debt-free college academy full course program and I have to say the value for the money uh, for what we got out of the program was absolutely amazing. Kevin takes you step by step with many many different tips and many different strategies for not only the student but for us as parents for our student things that we can do to really help save money and prepare. If you or your child are looking to save money on college costs, sign up for Debt Free College Academy today at DebtFreeCollegeAcademy.com using coupon code FREECOLLEGE. Beautiful people, if you enjoyed this episode of the Create Your Life series, be sure to download it from our podcast, which is available on CreateYourLifeSeries.com, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Google Music. Also, be sure to leave a review of the podcast. You can catch us live on Sundays from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time via 90.3 FM in New York or on Facebook Live at facebook.com backslash kevbrown1. We encourage you to participate in the conversation on Facebook or call in at 212-650-6903. Follow us on Instagram at CYL Series and at Kevin Y. Brown. Be blessed, and we'll see you back here live next week. Create your life. Create your life. Create your life. Create your life.